Okay, in this question we have a girl who's saving money each week in increasing amounts. So five pence in week one, seven pence in week two, nine pence in week three, and so on. So we have a sequence here, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so on, increasing by two each time, and therefore we can recognize that this is an arithmetic series. Um, and it has the first term A equals five, and the common difference D equals two. Now, part A, we want the amount she saves in week 200. Well, this is just the 200th term, U200. So we can use uh, the formula that you know uh, for the nth term. So that is A plus N minus 1 D. And in this case, A is 5. Uh, N is 200, so N minus 1 is 199. And D is 2. So we simply put that into the formula and work it out. So 5 plus 398 is 403. And remember, that's 403 pence. So you can give it as pence, or you can put it as pounds and pence. So 4 pounds and 3 pence. That's the answer to A. Part B, calculate her total savings over the complete 200-week period. So that means we're looking at um, the sum of the whole series for 200 terms, so S200. And again, we can use a standard equation, in this case for a sum, n over 2 brackets 2a plus n minus 1d. So we put what we've got into there, n is 200, uh, a is 5, so 2 lots of 5, n minus 1 is 199 again, and d is 2. And we just have to work that out. So 200 divided by 2 is 100, 2 times 5 is obviously 10, 199 times 2 is 398. So add together 10 and 398 to get 408, and it's 100 times 408, which is simply uh, 40,800. Um, and of course, we've got to remember that that's in pence. So it's 40,800 pence, but with a number that big, it makes a lot more sense to give your answer in pounds. So divide by 100, and we get 408 pounds. That's how much she saves. And that's the end of the question. So, in this question, Anne has got some sticks and she's made a bunch of patterns. In the first uh, pattern, there are four sticks, uh, and that makes just one square. And then there are seven sticks in the next pattern, making up two squares. And in the third row, she's got ten sticks, making up three squares. So this is obviously a sequence. And the sequence that we've got uh, is four, then seven, then ten, and so on. Okay, so it's going up in threes, it's an arithmetic series. And we want an expression for the number in the nth row. Okay, so for an arithmetic sequence, we have two things. We have the first term, in this case four, and the common difference, which we know to be three. So we can use the simple formula for the nth term. Un is a plus n minus one d. And just use the values that we've got. Okay, so a is four. n, well, we want a general expression, so we just keep that as n. d is three. And if we just tidy that up, multiply out the brackets, 4 plus 3n minus 3, and that becomes 3n plus 1. So the nth term is 3n plus 1, that's how many sticks it takes to make the nth pattern. Okay, part B, she's carrying on, and she does this until she's done 10 rows. So how many sticks does she need to make 10 rows? We want the total number, so this means we want a sum. Um, and in fact, we want the sum of the first 10 terms, S10. So we use this, the formula n over 2 brackets 2a plus n minus 1d. You can just quote that. And this time n is 10. So 10 over 2 brackets 2 times 4. Uh, and then we've got 10 minus 1 times by d, which is 3. And we just need to work it out. So 10 over 2 is 5. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 9 times 3 is 27, so we've got 5 multiplied by 8 plus 27, which is 35. And that gives me, uh, let's see, 175. So that's the total number of sticks she needed for those 10 rows. All right, let's give ourselves some more space for part C. Um, she started with 1,750 sticks. She continues to complete K rows, but doesn't have enough sticks to complete the k plus 1th row. Um, and we need to show this inequality is true. So let's try and translate this. If she completes k rows, that means the number of sticks that she's got to start with must be enough 
to complete k rows. How can we write that more mathematically? Well, we can say the number of sticks that she started with must be uh, greater than or equal to the number required for k rows. It would be equal to if she has just enough or greater than if she's got a few left over. Um, so let's make it even more mathematical. Um, the number of sticks that she starts off with is greater than or equal to, while the number of sticks for k rows is just the sum of k terms. So, um, she's got 1,750, so that's the number of sticks she started with. We can put that in. Um, for SK, uh, the sum of K terms, well, we just want to use the formula, okay? 2N, um, N over 2 times 2A plus N minus 1D, with A, as it was before, equal to 4. D is still equal to 3. And now K, uh, N is equal to K. So we just substitute all of that in that formula for SK. So we have k over 2 times 2 times 4, uh, and then k minus 1 times by d, which is 3. So we've got an inequality now. We just have to sort it out and rearrange it, and hopefully it'll end up like the one we're asked for. So k over 2, the bit inside the brackets becomes uh, 2 times 4 is 8. Multiply that out, I get 3k minus 3. Um, a good idea here is to multiply it by 2. Um, so if we do that, we're going to get uh, 3,500 is greater than or equal to k, lots of, and the bracket tidies up to 5 plus 3k. And I can just multiply that out. I want to have a factorised quadratic, so I need to multiply out this bracket first. So 5 times k is 5k, and k times 3k is 3k squared. So let's make it really quadratic-y and move everything onto the right-hand side. So naught is greater than or equal to 3k squared plus 5k minus 3,500. Uh, 3, so it's a quadratic, like the one we want. And if we look at what we're asked for, we need those two factors. And that really makes my life easy now because I can just check that the thing that I've got does factorise to give me those. And if it doesn't, I know there's a problem. But 3k and k, that obviously fits. And the minus 100 and plus 35, they do give me my minus 3,500. And if you think about it carefully, they give me my plus 5k as well. So that's my inequality, and that's the job done. That's what we're after. Or is it? Hang on a minute. Look up here. The original inequality that we're asked for has this. It's got a less than sign. And the one that I've come up with has got a greater than, well, it's a less than because we flip it around, but it's less than or equal to. So why is there an or equal to in mine and not in the answer? I think this is a slight ambiguity in the question. She completes k rows, so she could have just enough, or just enough plus a bit more. Um, and maybe this statement that she does not have enough to complete the k plus one row, maybe that is meant to imply um, that it, she at least has enough to start the k plus one row. And if she has enough to start the k plus one row, that means she has just slightly more than required for k rows, which means not more than or equal to, but more than. So I think that's why they've got a less than sign. Um, but I'm unapologetic because I think that it's um, rather ambiguous. However, if you've got um, a good explanation of that uh, that can improve this for me, then let me know in the comments or come and find me and I can edit the video. Anyway, there's a part D, find the value of K. So we've got an inequality and we have to solve it, okay? Um, so 3k minus 100, brackets k plus 35, is less than 0. So for any inequality, we first find the critical values from our two brackets when it's factorised. So that one gives me k equals 100 over 3, and the other one gives me k equals minus 35. Now what I need to do once I've got my critical values is do a quick sketch of what this would look like when plotted as a graph. Okay, so it's a quadratic, it has a positive coefficient of k squared, so it's that way up and my critical values tell me where it crosses the k-axis, namely at minus 35 and plus 100 over 3. Now I want the bit, if I look at my inequality, I want the bit where it is uh, less than 0. Okay, so I want the bit where my whole graph is negative, i.e. it is below the k-axis. Okay, so if I look at my graph, the bit that's below is everything in the middle, so everything to the right of minus 35, everything to the left of 100 over 3. 
So if this were an inequality question, I would give my solution as that range of k values. But k is a particular number. She completes k rows, and it's actually the most rows that she can complete without running out of sticks. So it's the largest value of k that fits this. Okay, It's got to be a positive, and it's got to be an integer. So let's think of the, the upper boundary is 100 over 3. So 100 over 3 is 33.3 uh, recurring, which can't be the number of a term. So the biggest positive integer that it could be is 33. So she completes 33 rows. That's the value of k, and that is the end of the question. Right, here it is. It doesn't come up that often, but you occasionally are asked to do this proof, and you need to know it off by heart. Prove that the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series is given by a, brackets 1 minus r to the n, divided by 1 minus r. So basically we write out the sequence, uh, or rather the series, a plus the second term, ar, the third term, ar squared, and so on. And then uh, the bits at the end, so the penultimate term, not quite the last term, would be ar to the n minus 2. Um, that's clearer when you realise that the last term, the nth term, is ar to the n minus 1. Okay, we know that this is the formula for the nth term. Um, so we've got our, our series there, that's the sum. And the trick is to multiply the whole thing by r, the common ratio. And if we go through term by term on the left, we get r times sn, that's fairly straightforward. Um, multiply this a by r, um, well that gives us ar, and I'll write that underneath the other ar to make it clearer. Um, multiply that by r, and we get ar squared. We would multiply the ar squared by r, and we'd get ar cubed, and so on. Eventually, we'd multiply the one before ar to the n minus 2 by r, and that would give us ar to the n minus 2. Multiply that one by r, we get ar to the n minus 1. And finally, if you multiply the last one by r, you get ar to the power n. And, okay, so that's halfway there. The next step is to subtract one of these lines from the other. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the second line from the first one and go through term by term. So we get Sn minus Rsn, that's what we have on the left. On the right, well, we start with the A from the top line. And then I would have plus Ar, but I've also got minus Ar. Okay, so those two cancel each other out. Then the Ar squareds cancel each other out. And in fact, all those terms that are lined up, they cancel each other out when we subtract. And the only thing that we're left with at the end is minus a r to the n, because there's nothing for that to cancel with. From here, you're almost there. We just need to factorize both sides. So take out sn on the left, we get 1 minus r in brackets. And take out a on the left, and we get 1 minus r to the n. And last step is simply to divide both sides by 1 minus r. So we're left with sn is equal to a brackets 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. And that's what we were asked for. Happy days. Part B, it wants the sum of this series. Now, you might look at that and recognize it as a geometric series. If not, it doesn't matter that much. You can just write out the first few terms to figure out exactly what it is. So the first term is when k equals 1. That would be 100 times 2 to the power 1. Um, second term, that's when k equals 2. So that would be 100 times 2 to the power 2, so 2 squared, and so on, and it goes all the way up to k equals 10. Um, so for k equals 10, you would have uh, 100 times 2 to the power 10. So if we just look at what's happening with that sequence, the first term is obviously 200, then we get 100 times 4, so 400, and each time the power of 2 increases, so we're multiplying by 2, we get 800, 1600, and so on. When it's written like that, it's much easier to see that it's a geometric series, and we can say that the first term, a, is 200, and the common ratio, r, is 2. It's doubling each time. So now, to find the sum, I can use the formula that we proved in part a, okay, the one up here, and I'm just using a as 200 and r equals 2. So we've got sum uh, is uh, a, which is 200, times 1 minus r to the n. So 1 minus 2 to the power n, to the power 10 rather, and divide that by 1 minus 2. Um, get on your calculators to do this, if you don't know your powers of 2. Um, 1 minus 2 to the power 10 is simply minus 1023, and divide that by 
minus 1, and what we get is uh, 204,600. And that is the answer to part B. Now part C um, doesn't have anything to do with the previous bits, except that it's a geometric series. We want the sum to infinity. There's a nice formula for that, but we need to know A and R. So for this one, the, the first term A is clearly 5 sixths. R, you might be good at picking this out, um, but if not, you can always find R by dividing any term by the term before it. So I'm going to divide 5 eighteenths by 5 sixths. Um, I could have done 5 54 divided by 5 eighteenths, and I've got the same answer. So the division, flip the second one, make it a multiplication, they cancel out, we get 6 eighteenths, which is 1 third. So that is the value of R. So I now know that A is 5 sixths and R is a third. And I can use my formula for the sum to infinity, which is A over 1 minus R. So I'll put those values in. A is 5 sixths divided by 1 minus a third. So that is going to be 5 sixths divided by 2 thirds. And I write it this way because it's easier to figure out. Um, flip the second one and make it a multiplication. So we have 5 sixths multiplied by 3 over 2. That's going to be uh, 15 twelfths, and then we'll cancel it down, and it's going to be 5 over 4. So the sum to infinity of that series is 5 over 4. Finally, what is the condition for an infinite geometric series to be convergent? Well, the simplest way to write it is that the modulus of R is less than 1. That means if you ignore the sign, then the common ratio is less than 1. You might be happier writing it like this. R is between minus 1 and plus 1. Make sure that they are not less than or equal to signs, because if it's 1 or minus 1, it doesn't work. OK, we have a sequence here, and we're given the first term, a1 is equal to k, where k is some positive integer, so it's a whole number, and we have this relationship. So let's figure out what this recursion relation means. So a n plus 1 is 3 times a n plus 5. OK, so that basically means that any term is 3 times the previous term plus 5. So how does that impact on part a? Well, it wants an expression for a2, the second term, in terms of k. So a2 is going to be 3 times a1 plus 5. Um, but we were told in the question that a1 is k. So we can simply write that a2 is equal to 3 times k plus 5. And that's my expression for a2. Part B, show that a3 equals 9k plus 20. We're going to do just the same thing. The third term is 3 times the second term plus 5. And we just happen to have just worked out the second term. So we're going to do 3 times that. So 3 times 3k plus 5, and then plus 5 to that. Uh, multiply out the brackets. We get 9k plus 15. And of course, we still get the plus 5. And thankfully, that tidies up to 9k plus 5. 20, which is exactly what we wanted. Right, part C, it wants the sum from r equals 1 to 4 of a r. What does that mean? Well, it means that it wants uh, a1 uh, plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. Okay, so once you understand that, it's actually really simple what it's asking, and we know most of that already. We know uh, a1, a2, and a3. We just don't know a4. So we'll go and work that out. We've got, we'll have got we just do the same thing that we've done in parts a and b. So the fourth term is equal to 3 times the third term, plus 5. Um, and we know the third term is 9k plus 20. So we'll do three lots of 9k plus 20 and add 5 to that. Multiply out the brackets. We're going to get 27k plus 60. And then of course, plus the 5. So that becomes 27k plus 65. So that's a4. I now know all of my first four terms, so I can just add them up. a1 is k, a2 is 3k plus 5, a3 is 9k plus 20, and finally a4 that I just worked out is 27k plus 65. And if you tidy all of that up, we end up with uh, 40k plus 90. So that's the summation that I was asked to find, and that's the answer to part C, part 1. Now it asks me to tell me that what I've, to show that what I've just worked out is divisible by 10, 
I translate that as show that it's a multiple of 10. Okay, when you think about it like that, we just have to show that it's 10 times something. Okay, so writing out the expression 40k plus 90, well, I can see that I can take out 10 from both of those terms as a factor. I can write it as 10 times 4k plus 9. And 4k plus 9 has got to be a whole number because k is an integer. So if you times a whole number by 4 and add 9, you get another whole number. So we've shown that our expression is 10 times an integer, and therefore it's a multiple of 10, therefore it's divisible by 10. There we are.